सो फ्रेंड्स वंडरिंग वॉट टू कुक इन द मानसून्स टूडे आई ब्रॉड फॉर यू फोर रेसिपीज गो एन वेर दूर देन द सम लवली स्प्राउटेड मूंग एंड पटेटो उसर सम लवली मशरूम पटेटो चॉप्स एंड सम लवली कोकोनट चटनी सैंडविचेस So let's see this beautiful goan verdur where you don't need to grind any masala paste it's just a shortcut and easy recipe now first i washed my bottle gourd or dudhi really well cut it up into half now i'm going to be only using half for this recipe and i'll be using half for the other recipe which i'll be posting very soon so keep tuned to akshita's recipes now after peeling it i've just taken off the top and i'm just going to cut it up like this into uh, medium sized cubes we don't want very small cubes we don't want large cubes so medium sized cubes so see that your dudhi is fresh always taste a little bit of the dudhi and see that it is not bitter if it is bitter please discard it your dudhi should be nice and sweet and fresh and not bitter at all so this is a half a cup of dudhi now i've taken one small tomato which i've chopped two green chilies which i've slit one medium sized onion which i've cut and one cup of thick coconut milk now i am using the ready made coconut milk powder which i've just mixed up with some warm water but if you want to use the organic you know actually make the coconut milk you are free to do that now in a bowl i'm going to take 1 tsp of goa garam masala i have posted a recipe it's super simple i will leave a link in the description box as well as the comment section so check it out now i'm going to add half a teaspoon of cumin powder half a teaspoon of pepper powder next i'm going to add 1 teaspoon of coriander powder and 1/4 teaspoon of haldi or turmeric powder that's all the powder masalas that you need now i'm going to mix all the powder masalas really well and i'm going to add 1 teaspoon of garlic paste i've just taken 4 large cloves of garlic and mashed them up in my mortar and pestle and i'm going to add about 1/4 cup of water add a little at a time and mix all these ingredients and this will become our masala paste so there's no need of grinding all the spices and going through all of that you can just mix everything nicely well together now the garam masala has got everything cinnamon cloves so you know you can see the recipe and your masala paste is ready so now we can start making our verdur so i've taken a pan heated it on a low to medium flame i'm going to add only 1 teaspoon of oil this recipe does not require extra oil Now once the oil is hot I'm going to add the slit green chilies and I'm going to fry the chilies really well so that they flavor the oil. Always fry your chilies well then they get a little bit of a white coating on the peel of the chili that way it flavors the oil also very well. So once the chilies are fried I'm going to add the onion I've just taken one medium sized onion washed it peeled it and just chopped it. and i'm going to saute this onion for at least half a minute till it becomes a little bit translucent so it's very important to you know bagar all the veggies well and now i'm going to add the small tomato that i've chopped and i'm going to fry the tomato also really well for about half a minute at least now i'm going to add this masala paste that we made with all the powder masalas now i always have all these powder masalas you know ready at hand I'll post I'll uh, leave a link to a video of my spice rack and even my kitchen tour video so for those of you who have missed it you can watch those all in the description box and the comment section down below now I'm just going to add about 1/4 cup of water to this masala paste and now we're just going to mix everything well and we're going to wait for the tomatoes to cook a bit to become a little soft that takes about half a minute so let the tomatoes cook for about half a minute till they're a little bit soft Now we're going to add the dudhi or the gourd, the bottle gourd, and we're going to coat all the pieces well with this bagar. Next, I'm just going to cover and cook this for about seven minutes, but stirring in between to ensure that the dudhi is cooked. So to ensure that, after about seven minutes, just press one of the pieces down with your spoon or a knife, and it should break very easily into. two pieces this is very important that the dudhi gets cooked before we add the coconut milk so mix everything nicely together and once your dudhi or your bottle gourd is cooked now you're going to add the coconut milk 
Just add a little more water, about one fourth cup of water. Mix everything nicely together. And you see how the color of this uh, verdu has become nice and light. Now we're going to add some salt to taste and a little pinch of sugar. Stir everything well, give it a taste, see if we need to add a little more salt. And then we're going to cover and cook this for another 5 minutes. And you can see that now the dudhi has become translucent. You can actually, you know, it's like the pieces are translucent. That means your dudhi is ready, your verdur is ready. And this goes best with some nice rice and some fried fish and pickle. Or even some prawn chili fry at the side. So just serve this up nice and hot. And it's really, really delicious. And this is very nice for the summer. It's very light on the uh, palate and the tummy. So do try out this recipe and do let me know in the comment section how you like this recipe. Go and check out all my other Goan recipes. All the recipes with their links will be in the description box as well as the comment section. You just click on the link and you can go to my recipe directly. So thank you so much for being here on Akshita's recipes. I'll catch you soon in my next video. Bye. So let's see today's lovely moong and potato usar. Now you can make this with sprouted moong or with plain, uh, you know, just uh, soaked moong. So watch the video till the end. I'll show you how to sprout the moong. So once the moong is sprouted, just put it into a pressure pan in a vessel like this. Don't add water to the vessel, only to the pan. And cook it for two whistles on high and then switch the cooker off. Once the cooker has cooled down to room temperature, your moong will look like this. So don't add any water into the moong. Now this is a paste which I have prepared and this is one boiled and cubed and peeled and cubed potato. So now for that paste, uh, I took about six green chilies. I'm using the light green chilies which are less spicy. One inch of ginger. This is about half a cup of grated fresh coconut and one cup of coriander and some salt to taste. So I just added all of that to the mixer and made it into a nice paste like this. So it shouldn't be very smooth or very coarse, just of this consistency so that everything is mixed well together. So now in my pan I'm going to add one tablespoon of oil. Once the oil is nice and heated, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, that is mohori or rye. Once the mustard seeds begin to splutter, I'm going to add one fourth teaspoon of haldi powder or turmeric powder, followed by half a teaspoon of asafoetida or hingo. Now we're going to add the ground paste to this bagar or to this 4D. And we're going to fry the paste for a whole minute till the paste is it starts oozing out a little bit of oil. So just fry it on a low to medium flame, stirring it. Now this usar is really delicious and you can have this with... Uh, pori or with rice, chapatis, even with pao, it tastes amazing. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of coriander powder or dhania powder and half a teaspoon of cumin powder, jeera powder. So these are all homemade powders. If you want to see how I do the, uh, make the powders at home, I'll leave a link to my recipe uh, of how to make ground powders at home itself so that there are no preservatives or anything in it. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of goda masala. Again, this is a homemade uh, masala. I'll leave the link to that. And I'm going to add one four teaspoon of garam masala. So even this recipe you'll find in the description box as well as the comment section. So now once all the masalas are really fried nicely, we're going to add the moong that we cooked. Remember, we didn't add any water to the moong. We just added the water to the pressure cooker and cook the moong for exactly two whistles. So like I said, you can either sprout the moong or you can leave the, just soak the moong for about uh, two to three hours and then use it. Now, if you want to see how I sprouted the moong, please watch the video till the end. It's a very simple process. So now I'm going to add one cup of hot water and mix everything really well together. Now, if you want to have more of a dry dish, then only add this one half cup of water. But if you want a little more gravy, then you can add another half cup of hot water. So I'm keeping it semi, uh, you know, dry in the sense, not too much of a gravy. Now you can also taste it and just see if you need to add a little more salt because we added salt only to the ground paste. So you can add salt if you like. Now mix everything really well together. So 
So now I'm going to add just about one teaspoon of jaggery or gur. Now, if you don't use jaggery in your cooking, you can also add sugar, just a little bit, maybe just a pinch of sugar. And now we're going to add this boiled, peeled, and cubed potatoes. So what I do is I take the potatoes, wash them well, and put them in my pressure pan for one whistle on high with some water in it. And then I simmer it for about five minutes. Put the pressure pan off, and once it cools down, I remove the potatoes, let them cool down a little, and then peel them and cube them. And now we're just going to cover and cook this on a low flame for three minutes. And you can see that our usal is all ready. You can also squeeze some lime juice on top of this. And it goes very well with pao, bread slices, pori, or rice. So do try out this recipe, guys, and let me know how you like it. And for those of you who want to know how I sprout the mook, you can watch the, uh, the remaining part of this video. So what I do is I take about uh, one wati of mook. I wash it very well under water, and then I soak it in about three cups of water overnight or for eight hours. Then I remove all the water and keep it aside again for another eight hours, and then you'll see that it sprouts. So if you want more sprouts, I mean you want to sprout more, just keep it for another half a. So let's see today's lovely mushroom potato chops. Now, first, I'm going to make the filling. So here, I'm just going to heat a pan on a low to medium flame. Add about half a tablespoon of oil. Now, you can use olive oil or you can use regular cooking oil. Let the uh, oil heat up well. Then I'm going to add four cloves of garlic that I've chopped fine. We're going to fry the garlic really well. Till the rawness of the garlic goes away, and the garlic also flavors the oil really well. Then I'm going to add half an inch of grated ginger. All I've done is taken a cheese grater and just grated the ginger. Next goes in one medium-sized onion that I've chopped fine. Now we're going to sauté all of this really well till the onion becomes nice and translucent. Now I have used about uh, seven button mushrooms. Wash them really well, and I've chopped them up, taking off the stems. Chop them up fine, and we're going to fry these mushrooms really, really well. So we're going to cook these mushrooms to lower the moisture. As you can see, there's some liquid or you know moisture that is uh, that the mushroom uh, you know gives out as you cook it. So we're going to let all of that dry up. And really fry the mushrooms or cook the mushrooms really well before we season it or flavor it. So now you can see the mushrooms have nicely uh, cooked. Now we're going to add about one four teaspoon of pepper powder. So this is homemade pepper powder. I've just taken the peppercorns, just roasted them, and ground them to a fine powder. Then we're going to add some salt to taste. And again, fry everything real or mix everything really well. Now I'm going to add about one teaspoon of coriander powder or dhania powder. I've done the same thing. I've taken the dhania, roasted it, and all the coriander seeds, and then ground them to a fine powder. So I do this, uh, you know, uh, make the uh, coriander powder, cumin powder, pepper powder, and keep it so I can just use it when I need it. And now I'm going to add half a teaspoon of jeera powder or cumin powder. Mix everything really well. And now I'm going to add half a teaspoon of red chili powder for a little bit of a spice. And just a pinch of garam masala. Now this is again homemade garam masala, so I'll leave a link of how I prepared my garam masala at home. And mix everything really well. So, if you want to find any of my recipes, for example, garam masala, all you'll do is just type garam masala Akshita's recipes in the YouTube search button, and my recipe will pop up. So that's the easiest way to find my recipes. So now our mixture is ready. So we're just going to keep it aside to cool. Now we're going to work on the potatoes. So I've taken about uh, I'm going to be using just four potatoes, but I'm going to cook them for about one whistle on a high flame in my pressure pan, and then simmer them for ten minutes. Let them cool down completely after they're cooked. And then I'm going to just peel the potatoes and bash them up. 
So you see, I have more than four potatoes in the pressure pan. That's because I always like to keep, you know, two boiled potatoes at hand uh, in my refrigerator. Anyway, so now I've mashed up the potatoes really well. We have our filling ready and I just have some breadcrumbs at hand. So I'm just going to make a ball of the filling and then just flatten it out completely. And then I'm going to make it into a, like a basket shape. Just put in about a teaspoon of the filling. Don't overfill it and don't underfill it. And then just seal it up. Collect all the sides of the mashed potato like this. Seal it up. And now all you have to do is just coat it with some breadcrumbs. Now you don't need any egg dip for this or anything. It just, uh, you know, immediately coats the potato chop without any other uh, like egg medium or anything required. So just dip them in the breadcrumbs. Now, an easy way to make breadcrumbs if you require them really urgently is just take some bread slices and just put them in your mixer and make a you know make a bread make the breadcrumbs. So now our potato chops are ready. I mean, uh, we just have to do is just I mean, all we have to do is just shallow fry them. So I'm going to heat a pan on a low to medium heat. I'm going to add half a tablespoon of uh, oil. So you can make these potato chops and keep them in your refrigerator and you know whenever you want you can just shallow fry them. Keep them for at least about two or three days not longer than that. And now I'm just going to shallow fry them on both sides till they're nice and golden brown in color. Now I also have a recipe for chicken mince uh, potato chops. I leave a link for that in my uh, description box below. So fry them well on both sides till they're nice and golden brown in color. And, uh, you know, just enjoy this with some ketchup. And uh, this is an ideal snack or even, uh, you know, as a side dish with some dal, rice or with anything. It just goes amazing. You will. So I hope you like today's recipe. I hope you give it a try. Do leave your comments in the comment section below. Go and check out my other recipes. Share my recipes with family and friends. And I'll catch you soon in my next video. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye. So let's see today's lovely coconut chutney and coconut chutney sandwiches. So here I've taken half a cup of freshly grated coconut. Try to use fresh coconut rather than, uh, you know, using coconut which is in the refrigerator. One fourth cup of fresh coriander. Uh, two light green chilies that I've just chopped fine. Two cloves of garlic that I've chopped fine. One tablespoon of lemon juice. 1 inch of ginger which I've just grated, about 1 fourth teaspoon of sugar and some salt to taste. So these are the very few ingredients that you require and a little bit of water, uh, about 2 to 3 tablespoons to grind uh, the while grinding this chutney. So I'm just going to add all of these ingredients to my mixer. Now this chutney can be also used, uh, you know, for idlis, dosas, upma. And today I'm going to show you how to make chutney sandwiches using this lovely, fresh and delicious chutney. So I'm just going to add all the ingredients, squeeze the lime. And then I'm just going to add about 2 to 3 tablespoons of water and I'm going to grind this to this paste and our chutney is ready. So I'm just going to transfer this to a nice airtight uh, glass container. Uh, and I store it in the refrigerator in the chiller uh, section for about two to three days. Do not store this fresh uh, coconut chutney for more than two to three days because then, you know, a, a, a coconut is, uh, I mean, is perishable, doesn't have a very long shelf life. So try to use the chutney within about two to three days. Now I'm going to just take four slices of uh, sandwich bread. Try to use the uh, thick sandwich bread, you know, which is wider also and just cut off the edges. If you like the edges, you can keep the edges, but I like to make them without the edges. And I use the edges to make some breadcrumbs so it doesn't go to waste also. So just take off the edges of the sides. And now I'm just going to apply a little bit of butter to all the four slices. Just a little, not too much. This helps us to, you know, uh, I mean, it elevates the taste of the uh, sandwich as well as uh, it helps us to, you know, uh, nicely spread out the chutney too. 
So I'm just going to evenly spread out this green fresh coconut chutney. Put a nice generous uh, helping of it onto one of the buttered slices. Just spread it out with a knife like this so it gets spread to all the corners of the bread. And then just place another buttered uh, slice on top of it. And now we're just going to cut it up into half. And then if you like these mini sandwiches, which we at our place like really a lot, I'm going to cut it up again. So I'm going to get four sandwiches out of two slices. And they look really pretty when they are, you know, in this, I mean, mini like this. So with the butter and the chutney, it tastes simply delicious. So do give this recipe a try, guys. And if you would like to see more videos like this, then don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up. Also, by, by clicking the thumbs up icon. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and become a part of Akshita's recipes. Once you have subscribed, there is a small little bell icon that will pop up. So just click on that. That way, whenever I put up a new recipe or a new video, you get a message for the same. So on that note, I'll say bye and I'll catch you in my next video sooner than you think. This is Akshita saying bye, take care, stay healthy, stay fit, be kind and loving to one another. So till we meet again, bye.